The objective of cyber risk and maturity is being able to handle the daily struggles of security and risk management. And the organization's ability to fend off risk and attacks are really best measured in a resiliency framework that is industry recognized, such as NIST. And there are some steps to consider for a successful assessment of an organization's maturity, requiring the following. One is executive buy-in, which is governance, organizational stakeholders, systems or business process managers, and the individuals that are actually responsible for the implementation of business systems, processes, and technology. In this lab, we're going to walk you through something of a simulated experience of performing a cyber risk and maturity assessment. And we'll do this with a fictional good corp. So inside of your lab data folder, you should find the good corp audit notes. I'm going to open that up right now and kind of walk you through it. Inside of this document are audit notes performed on good corp that summarize their maturity in regards to having a functioning security program. The notes are focused on key areas such as leadership, business risk, and critical policies such as asset management. And we'll be using these notes to rate their maturity in regards to a standardized framework. And for that, we'll need a tool to translate these notes into. We'll use a tool called the NIST Cybersecurity Framework Tool or NIST CSF tool made by John Masserini. And he's a very experienced senior cybersecurity professional in the field with a lot of compliance experience. And he's made this really awesome tool that's mapped against the NIST 853 and BS7799 family of controls and also relates to many of the other international standards such as ISO 27000 and COBIT. And his words I'll use more specifically, he has said that it's a tool to measure what you do, which are your practices, against what you say you do, which are your policies. And honestly, that's just a generally good way to measure the integrity of anything. And so the tool is really straightforward to use. We are going to be looking at policy maturity and practice maturity as stated here in the first description. And yes, we're in Excel space now. We're actually using LibreOffice Calc, which is sort of like Excel. So for those of you going through this lab, if you're more in the office administrative side, you're probably going to work well with this type of tool. But for those of you that don't really use a lot of Excel based types of tools, this might feel a little awkward at first, but it's pretty straightforward anyways. The first step is to review the maturity levels tab to help us gain an understanding of how we want to rank things. That'll give us some context of what a score should be. And then the next step over here, number two, is on the CSF summary tab. We'll want to review the target scores for applicability within your organization. And this is meant to be the end goal of what you think the right level of control is for your organization. And yes, if you haven't picked up on the language yet, there's a lot of subjectivity when we start getting into compliance because we have to find a way to relate it to an individual business. And that's really the big challenge when it comes to compliance. Is how do you take this monster framework of controls and recommendations and requirements and then apply them to any business? And that's why we see in step three that he's suggesting that don't feel so locked into a hard zero to five value. There is context and consideration. 2.5 might fit the bill. So we'll start to walk through that together. And the tabs ahead have sample values. They're already preloaded inside of your file on your system. We'll go and delete that as we go, but eventually we'll want to replace them all or as many as possible. Okay, so moving on to the maturity levels of levels one through five, we can see, for example, that a level one maturity level for policy might be something that a policy or standard does not exist or is not formally approved by management. So something sort of ad hoc on the fly. And then the expectation of the process is that the standard process itself does not exist. And now moving on to level two, we see this notion of it being repeatable. And this is where security programs typically start off is that there's a general policy or standard that exists. It was put in place to meet an initial requirement, just a check in the box so that maybe a proposal or a request for a business or contract was achievable, but then it wasn't looked at for a long time. And that's where you get that level of repeatable stage. It hasn't been reviewed in more than two years. And same with the process maturity of it as well. So in other words, it means if something goes wrong, there's a process that no one has looked at for a while, but generally people informally understand what to do and they've sort of changed it and it's not exactly like the original process, but it gets the job done. And that's level two. And that's where a lot of businesses really live until they start to get more mature into level three. And level three takes a while to get to. Consider these requirements for a moment. 
it means that there's a standard process with formal management approval and exceptions occur less than 5% of the time. That means generally everyone knows what to do and no one's really doing anything ad hoc. There's always a process. It's generally followed. We're looking at 95% of the time for the policy and the process itself can almost always be documented. And again, less than 10% of an exception rate over here. That's a really high performing organization. Think about where you might work or have worked in the past. And can you honestly say that 95% of the time policies were understood and followed and that 90% of the time processes were well documented with evidence? That's a pretty high achieving organization. So level three is really up there. So level three really summarizes that things are defined, well-documented, high targets of success, but it doesn't have to stop there. And that's why we get to level four. And this is when we get to a managed level of security program where exceptions on the policy side occur less than 3% of the time. That's, that's really good. That's 97% when it comes to compliance on policy. And then the process side gets even more tightened up. And the big difference between getting from a defined level to a managed level of security program is that you don't just have everything defined, but you actually have targets, you have metrics, you know where you should land and you know what you need to beat and you know where you need to go. And that's really what gets you to a managed level of process maturity when it comes to a security program. And then getting to a level five stage is really about as close to perfect as you can get. That at that point is really just general human error that can occur but everything is documented, everything is understood, everyone knows what to do, when to do it, and how. And at that point, it's just going to be the level of expertise of your team when it comes to human error and mistakes that just generally can naturally occur. Your biggest problem, honestly, when it comes to level five is just turnover. That's really it. And yeah, that's a lot to take in, so let's actually work with this tool a little bit to make more sense of it. The NIST CSF summary tab shows us some sample values provided that based on a sample of audit notes, kind of what we'll be looking at, we can then give a score based on our assessment and plug away at these different areas and see what it sort of looks like on a graph. And then we can provide some reasonable targets. If we're scoring one across the board, it doesn't really make sense to make your target five. Maybe your target should be 1.5 or two and slowly but surely incrementally get you there. So for example, if we adjust the asset management score to a target of four because our policy score was 3.42, so we can go and change that value to say a four in the target score, and then notice the graph will just automatically update. Now we can bump that up to five, but notice a problem, right? As we continue to increase the target score for one, the overall target score increases too, and that really brings a lot of red. So let's keep it at three and let's look at these family of controls from the NIST cybersecurity framework. We can see that they're divided up into five categories and inside of them, they have subcategories. So at the top here, this is the identify functionality of the cybersecurity framework, starting off with asset management. You have to know what you have in order to know what you need to protect and to also know what you can lose. So what this is trying to say, and this is why the NIST cybersecurity framework is so good, honestly, when you're first getting started, is this gives you a nice broad scope of what you need to establish to ensure you have a strong asset management component to your security program. Let's walk through some of these categories here. The first one being physical devices and systems within the organization are inventoried. The second being software platforms and applications within the organization are inventoried as well. Third, organizational communication and data flows are mapped. Fourth, external information systems are cataloged. Fifth, Resources such as hardware, devices, etc., are prioritized based on their classification, criticality, and business value. And then finally, we have the cybersecurity roles and responsibilities for the entire workforce, and third party stakeholders are established. So you can see, right, this is still broad, but if you're able to achieve these main subcategories, you'd have a pretty strong asset management policy inside of your security program. So let's observe how the policy maturity is at 4.3 and a practice maturity of two for the sample values. And let's go back inside of the maturity levels and do some comparison to see what that actually looks like. So we can see that we have some disparity here. We have a level four managed policy, meaning that generally everyone understands there's formal management approval. No one's really breaching the policy by any degree. However, the process is laid out to achieve the policy is really informal. So the process itself to get there and complete the policy or the requirements of it isn't very well laid out. It sort of exists, but 
people change it on the fly. The results generally meet the needs of the policy, but everyone's doing it in slightly different ways. So that means the, the process itself needs to be refined further in this case. So how is GoodCorp doing? Well, first, let's go and wipe all these values inside of asset management. And I'm going to do the first one with you, and the challenge inside of this module will be for you to finish up the rest. So let's do the first one together, delete all the values inside here, and clear the slate. And this should reflect inside of the NIST CSF summary tab. We can see they're both zeroed out. Perfect. Now let's go look at the good corp audit notes and then make some level of an assessment here together on how effective their first subcategory is in asset management. Okay, so as per the audit notes, we can see that the organization purchases mobile devices for some employees and tracks those in an inventory, but many users use their own mobile device, which are not tracked. We can also see that there really isn't a formal process for managing systems. The organization is aware of who has provided devices and can locate these devices, but they do not have a current program to track personal devices. So that's interesting. I, I think based on that, we can probably say that they're on the lower end and good corp will be in this case, but we can see that ad hoc processes sort of exist. Some people buy them, some people get them purchased by the company and the company generally knows who has it, but there really isn't a process in place. So it's probably somewhere between a level one to two for the process maturity. I think I'll probably go with, they're probably on the lower end. It sounds like people are just putting in requests to get something bought. So I'll give a practice maturity of two because it, there is something ad hoc in place in terms of practice, but it's sort of policy wise, it's a one it doesn't seem quite clear about what is the actual policy and who should be getting a device purchased or bringing their own. So as we can see now that they're pretty much on the low end when it comes to the first subcategory of asset management, I'd give them a target score of one to get to then in this case, instead of trying to get them to meet a level three. And that's really it for a little bit of an introduction into compliance. Thankfully, we have these really well-established, refined control families out there like the NIST Cybersecurity Framework, and there are others. And this gives us a really good baseline for us to rate our security program or lack thereof, maybe we don't even have one, but at least we can use this as a framework to lean on to understand what we need to do to generally improve the security posture and thus reducing the overall security risk of our organization.